Well, hello there. When I was a lad, I was told a gruesome story about that nasty orcarus gang who lived on the south coast some 250 years ago and were tried for murder here in Chichester in 1749. I've hardly told a soul since, but all right, I'll tell you what I know, but you better keep it to yourself, as smugglers don't like snitches, as you'll soon find out. It is said that the Orcus gang were first mentioned in 1735 and very quickly left their mark in history. Their influence spread from Kent right the way through the south to Dorset and they could call on dozens of men to join their cause when needed. But back in 1735 they had more humble beginnings. Named after the village of Orkhurst in Kent, there were 14 core members of the gang. They would steal things like wool, and soon became so feared they would even drink in pubs with their weapons on the table. No one dared approach them. The tale, I was told, took place on a dark and stormy night near Poole in Dorset. The Orkhurst gang were waiting on the beach at Christchurch just down the road for their ship, the Three Brothers, to come in. The boat was carrying rum, brandy, coffee and tea. The tea itself was a very valuable commodity back then. Everyone loves a cup of tea. The Orkhurst gang had hundreds of horses ready and waiting on the beach to transport the tea. Nearly two tons altogether. But the boat never came in. It turns out that the ship had been seized by customs officers that night who had taken all the smuggled goods to the customs house at Pool Harbor. We know this because John Perrin had been on the Three Brothers as it was seized. He managed to row a small boat away under the cover of darkness and tell the rest of the gang. The smuggled goods were too valuable to leave, so the gang had to plan. In the dead of night, around 30 smugglers crept up to the customs house, only to discover that the Navy had stationed a huge ship in the harbor, with his gun pointing at the customs house to shoot anyone approaching. The smugglers were savvy, though, and waited for the tide to go out. This lowered the ship in the water until eventually its guns were unable to reach the customs house. With the threat gone, the smugglers managed to reclaim all two tons of tea and rode away into the night. The customs officers were furious and offered a huge sum of money for anyone who could locate the smugglers. 500 pounds, which was a fortune back then. Despite the massive reward, getting help from anyone proved difficult for two reasons. Firstly, the smugglers were liked by a lot of people because of all the cheap illegal goods they provided. Secondly, they were so feared, no one would dare tell on them. Months and months went by without the officers finding anyone who could help, until one day, when a customs officer by the name of William Galley came across a young shoemaker, Daniel Chater. Daniel had received a bag of tea from one of the smugglers, a man named John Diamond. Chater couldn't pass up the huge reward and was called to Chichester as a witness by customs services. Word quickly spread of Chater's defiance and it didn't take long for the Orcus gang to hear. They were furious and set about finding Chater before he reached Chichester. En route, Galley and Chater stopped at the White Hart pub in Rowland's Castle to ask for directions and have a quick beer. But such was our smuggler's reach, the landlady of the pub just so happened to be the mother of one of the gang. She sent word out to the gang to come quickly and then plied Chater and Galley with beer until they got so drunk they had to stay the night. This is where the story turns nasty. When Chater and Galley fell asleep, the smugglers dragged them out of their beds, out of the pub and tied them to their horses. They whipped the men before travelling to a nearby stable to finish him off. They cut off Chater's nose before throwing him down a well. They threw heavy rocks on top of him to finish the job. Galley met a similar fate and was buried alive. As I said, gruesome stuff. The Orcus gang were feared for a reason. Following these brutal murders, the public felt differently about the Orcus gang. 
The names of the smugglers were printed in the newspaper, and with a £500 reward still in place, other people came forward to snitch on the gang. Seven of the Oakers' gang were caught and tried for murder in Chichester Court. After being found guilty, they were sentenced to death by hanging. One of the smugglers, William Jackson, died in jail, while the others were gibbeted in various places, including north of Chichester on the Broil and on Selsey Beach. One of the beaches the gang used themselves to smuggle goods to serve as a warning to other smugglers. There, now you know what I know. The Orcus gang were a ruthless, feared and successful gang of smugglers. Just don't tell anyone I told you.